Hey there, welcome to yet another one of my cheesy YouTube videos. My next video was going to be on rebuilding a carburetor for an 8 horsepower Briggs engine on a Troy built horse tiller, but in the process, I thought I'd get my little old Troy built pony running. And this engine actually has run pretty good in the past, but it's set a couple years outside in the rain. And it's not starting up for me this year. So I started fiddling with it. Let me just get this thing knocked out of the way, then I'll get to work on that old carburetor is what I kind of figured. But the more I dig into this thing, I'm like, man, this is taking time. And this is, may actually be helpful to some of y'all. Some of y'all going to say, what are you showing that crap for? I'm trying not to assume you know a lot of stuff. I know a lot of you do. I want to show you the steps I'm going through and trying to get this little old tiller running. And I know it's going to run, so let's get started. The first thing I did is I dumped fuel in it. And I cranked it and cranked it and cranked it and nothing happened. So, first thing I notice when I'm cranking it, it's got compression. When I pull the cord, it doesn't just go, this is it, this is it. It's brrrr, brrrr. It tells me I got compression, so that's a good start. That means my valves are working and everything else. So it had compression, but it wasn't starting. So I got one of two things. I got a fuel problem, or I got a ignition problem, or I could have both. In the process of playing with it, I pulled the fuel line off the carburetor and actually just let the fuel run off on the ground. Actually, I, it was just a puddle. And I looked at the puddle and said, just, just something not right about that puddle. The puddle was clear, but it just didn't seem like it was gasoline. Stuck my hand on it, smelled it. It smelled, but it could have been anything that was already on my fingers, but it didn't smell like gasoline. So, but I just went ahead and drained it into there. Well, I let a little bit more gasoline drain out on the ground. And it started to kind of run across the floor here. And I could see the water sitting on top of the gasoline. You could see the two not mixing as it, as, as it flowed. So, so I knew my tank had a lot of water in it. But before that, I took this little humdinger. And you put one in on the spark plug, which is out right now, and the other one on the spark plug wire. And I gave the crank handle a pull. And you could see this thing flash telling me the ignition is firing. That's actually when I went ahead and said, okay, it's got fire to the spark plug. Let's look at the fuel. That's when I pulled the fuel line off, saw what I said. Well, I don't know if that's gasoline or not. And I went ahead and drained all the fuel out of the tank. But I took a pry bar and I just shoved some rags in there, made sure I could hold them and pull them back out. And I soaked up every bit that I could in that tank till when I rocked the tiller around, I did not see anything flowing. I'm at a point now where I feel pretty confident that my tank is clean. I may have clean gas in it, but that don't mean the carburetor is clean. So I pulled the carburetor bowl off, and lo and behold, it was rusty in there. And a little emery cloth, cleaned the bowl up. The gasket looks like crap, but I'm not dropping everything to get a rebuild kit and go through the carburetor. I'm just trying to make this sucker run for now. And then I can always go back and rebuild the carburetor. But clean the, clean the rust off the edge of the bowl. And that's important because sometimes that little float inside the bowl can bump up against that rust. And that rust could, could prevent the float from opening or from closing. So good clean bowl is important. So I clean the bowl. So now before I put the bowl back on, I had the fuel line hooked to the carburetor. I turned the fuel on. It flowed through the needle valve out onto the ground. And I could push up with the float and shut the flow off. And it shut off and I let off on the float and it flowed. So it seems like the float is going to be working okay. What I was doing there more than anything, I was checking the needle valve to make sure it shut the flow off. Because if it had crud in there, the flow can go up and shut the needle valve off. But the needle valve would still be letting fuel flow past it which could be flooding out your engine. So I feel pretty good that I'm gonna have fuel going to the spark plug. I took the throttle cable off and I just wanted to make sure, flip the choke around, 
and flip the throttle around with no interference just in case there's a sweet spot where it wants to start. I temporarily got that disconnected. So I pulled on it and pulled on it and pulled on it, flipped with the throttle on the choke and I got a little bit of a pop. So I, I know I got ignition. So now I need to stop and say, okay, it's, it wants to start. It doesn't want to start real bad, but it wants to start. So the next step was to pull the spark plug out. And it's evaporated already, but it was wet. So if your spark plug's wet, there's a chance that your your it's going to drown out the spark and the it's the the energy electricity is just going to flow through the wetness to ground. Drying it out's good, but it's also got a lot of carbon on it. So I'm going to take some emery cloth, clean it up, get a good clean spark plug, put it back in, and this engine's going to run. How do I know that? Because I know I got good clean, good clean supply of fuel. I know I've got spark, and I know I've got compression. It's going to run. May not run good. It may run like crap. That that gets into tune up as far as maybe this plug's it may look good, but maybe it's not that great. Oh, another thing I can do, which I may do. Let's do it. Let's see if we got spark. I just got my the body of my spark plug wedged up against that exhaust shroud. Did you see it? Spark plug's got spark. I'm actually in the process of troubleshooting, get it running, and the cord broke. Go figure. There you have it. My little old tiller is going to run. Yahoo! So it needs a bowl gasket. I fixed some pull cords, which I managed to have broke during this project. I've discovered I got a broken guard. You'll notice that with most of my troll builds, I get rid of the guards. You do what you want. I wish it had guards over the wheels so I wouldn't be tromping over the plants as I get close to them. Purring like a kitten, though. I'm going to get a better bowl gasket, then I'll be done with this tiller. Get back to whatever I was I was going to do today. Thanks for watching my video. Please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and look forward to more videos. I, I do all sorts of stuff. That's why my channel is aimless. I'm trying to put out one Mechanican video every Friday. And if I do something other than Mechanican, I'll usually put it online just as soon as I do it, just kind of fill in. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this helped people out. Thanks. Remember, if you love life and learning new things, goaimless.com.